I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Dave. How's everything going this week? It's going extremely well. Um, uh, it's, an, it's a nice week. You know, I, we've just opened up into that new edition where yeah. I don't see you anymore. I know. I mean, <laughs> wow. If, I, if we don't bump into each other in the kitchen, I don't know if you're here, you're not here. I know. It's funny now, like, you know, finding new traffic patterns, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. You know, I come in a different door in the morning and um, I will start putting my lunch in the new fridge once I remember that it's plugged in now. <laughs> Um, I keep keep you know going to the uh, the other fridge and the old one yeah and um, just kind of like at one point yesterday I came out and I I walked over to to where Cindy and Patty are and I just said I'm lonely because <laughs> no no it was the end of the day and no one was around sure so sure yeah but it's well, nice it's, it's a nice yeah space. it's a beautiful beautiful new space mm-hmm. and and I can't wait for our our members to come in and see it and, and start using it. Yeah, we're starting. It's really, it's really neat. We're starting to get some furniture. Um, I think we mentioned on the podcast before that we'll, we have a member space now. Um, yes. You know, our hopes are that members will come and enjoy a cup of coffee, meet, you know, schedule meetings with other members there. Um, the space has a ton of natural light, which is awesome yes, and is incredibly is. hard to find in an office. So yep. um, we've really taken advantage of that light and um, there's even some floor to ceiling windows in the main seating area and we've we're slowly getting some furniture added to the space and we've got some in there now but we definitely know we need more um and so good it's it's really it's nice i sat in there yesterday with hillary and just like chatted for five minutes you know got to know her um, a little bit better good since she's been working with us for a couple weeks now yep but yeah, that's great. Yeah, a lot of exciting things going on. It is. I'm I'm looking forward to you know how can we utilize that space to do some new things we haven't thought of yet because that's yep. that's really cool. Yep. Definitely. So we're talking about growth and engagement today. Yes, and I know this is one of your favorite topics. Um, I I think this is actually I met you when you like officially met you when you were yes. Um, weren't working at MACNI yet, and you would come in to do, I think it was a council event maybe, about employee engagement, and it was awesome. Um, it was the first time I'd ever used Prezi. Oh, Prezi. yes, I remember that now. Um, yep. for first and last, maybe? First and last, yeah, probably, okay. yeah. Not that I don't like it, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, it's um, it's different. and it, It's different. And right. it reminds me that we should maybe do another one of those, because it was really awesome. But anyways, we are going to talk about that today. Um, so tell us yes. about the statistics that you found when doing your research. So the statistics that, that I had uh, talked about back in, I, I guess it would have been 2015, maybe the fall of 2015, um, were about two years old at the time. Gallup had studied 25 million U.S. workers and found that about 28% of the U.S. workforce was actually engaged in their job. About 50% were disengaged in their job. And the the balance, you know, they were saying were actively disengaged. So the actively disengaged are those that that technically, um, they're working against us. They're they're bad-mouthing the company, the organization. They are are doing whatever they can do to do as little as possible um, and just not get fired type of thing. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that complain about everything under the sun. The the fifty percent, the middle of the group there that's that's uh, just disengaged. They just come to work, and they do what they think is a good job, but they're not engaged. They're just, you know, when uh, I used to have a video years and years and years ago where this one guy said, you know, all these guys do is they come in and they they do their eight and they hit the gate, so to speak, and right. you know, punch out and leave the factory. That's what the the disengaged workers are doing. So if we think about it, you know, somewhere between 28, and I, I, I did hear that as high as maybe 32% now might be engaged, so maybe we're doing a bit better. They're the ones that are truly engaged in their job. They're, they're innovative. They're trying to make things better. Um, they're excited to come to work. And, and, I, and I thought about that, and, and I was wondering why, you know, what, what is it that keeps those people engaged? And I was actually listening to um, another podcast, 
uh, and I'll put the 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 notes in in um, I'll put the list of the name of that podcast in our show notes because it's escaping me right now. I might be able to to find it a little bit later on. Um, but this person mentioned the fact that growth is needed for an employee to be excited and happy at work, and it just seemed to click for me that really, if we can get our employees on a growth plan, they will be engaged. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things I touched on in my my email post that went out was that years ago, when I'm talking years ago, I'm talking like mid mid to late '90s. In our supervisory leadership class, I would talk about empowerment. That was the key phrase back then. You need to empower your employees, and 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 it was true. But I believe that part of this empowerment was more than just empowerment. I think it was growth. And and the reason why I believe that is that. I would ask the class, give me a time when you couldn't wait to get to work. And routinely I would get an answer of, well, we're getting a new machine, we're getting some new software, um, just really excited about where the company's going. And, I, and so really those are growth opportunities if you think about it. And then I said, well, give me a time when you hate going to work. And sorry, I just kicked the <laughs> filing cabinet that my <laughs> microphone is sitting on. This room is getting really cramped right now. I, I know, maybe I it's, know. Maybe it's the 20 plus boxes of food that's <laughs> for our food drive. But anyways, I digress. Um, I said, give me a time when you don't want to come to work. And the answer was, oh, you know, when I got an employee problem, I'm going to have to fire somebody. I've got a project that isn't working well. Um, and, and those are times really when we don't feel that we're making progress in our job. Mm-hmm. So again, I think it comes back to growth. Right. If we're learning, it's fun. If we see a path forward for ourselves, it's fun and we will be engaged. So how could someone um do you, well do you think that people can self-identify where they are? Can they identify as if they're engaged, disengaged or actively disengaged or do you think that um well don't don't necessarily know that about themselves. Or maybe like, does everyone think that they're engaged, but in reality they're not? Or, or can people? A great question that, out, um, you know? that I've never, that I've never thought of before. My, my feeling would be that people can self-diagnose whether mm-hmm. or not they're engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, and I really believe that part of it could be this, this empowerment question. Right. Um, uh, do you feel that you're making progress in your job would be a question. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that you have the ability to make decisions in your job? Do you feel, do you look forward to coming to work? That's the first question. Right. You know, now, let's be honest. Um, if I was given the opportunity of coming to work or going fishing <laughs> on a beautiful sunny day, I might pick the fishing. Right. But I will tell you this, that that when I do go on a vacation, after a while, I, I want to come back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and so I believe that, that, that impl- if, if you don't enjoy your job, you're not engaged, clearly. That's, right. that's going to be the case. If you enjoy your job from time to time, there's times, look, think about the times when you, basically, the question I asked my, my class back then, give me examples of when you love to go to work. And if there's nothing you're going on in your job that you're looking forward to, you're not engaged. Mm-hmm. So I believe that that um, we have to remedy that because who nobody wants to go to work hating going in every day, right? You know, I I, I use an example in one of my classes of a gentleman that I know. Uh, there's no way he's listening to the podcast, so I can speak pretty freely about him. Um, he, he told me once, he was a toolmaker at B.G. Salsley, and he said, I hated going to work every day of my life. Wow. I thought, how horrible. Mm-hmm. And the sad part was when he finally got to the end of his working career and got his dream, which was retirement, he put an addition on his house, and I think within six or nine months, his wife passed away of a massive coronary. Wow. So now he's sitting lonely, probably not enjoying life. So here, this this poor man, nice man, We'll live his whole life never really enjoying anything. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, that's, that's the ultimate tragedy. Because right. I believe that people that are not growing have died already 
internally. They just haven't made it official. Mm-hmm. Well, so and I want to also the I'm great sorry, go ahead. the great news is since you know people can typically self-identify where they are on this on the spectrum of engagement. Um, you know, you can change where you are if you absolutely if you know where you're starting, and so like. I'm hoping that we can talk through um, both what employees can do, like what the individual can do to put themselves on a growth plan. Um, You know, maybe not all leaders are or employers are um, on board with this, but then also what can a leader do who's scratching their head thinking, why, why aren't my employees as engaged as I'd like them to be? Sure. Great. Two great questions. And and we will make sure that I cover both of them. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the one about um, you have a leader that 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 will say gets it. Mm-hmm. Let's let's start with that. Um, in my post, I actually talk about um, a job. So a lot of if you look at the data, the data says that the key to driving employee engagement is for the employee to have a good. Re- it it falls on senior leadership to have a good relationship with senior leadership. That's half the story. Mm-hmm. And, and I use an example from my own career um, when, I was, when I was a production manager, new into the position, job that I love, still one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. Um, it was in a high-tech sector, um, a boss that I really liked, had a great relationship with him, still have a great relationship with him, but something was missing. And I remember going into his office once and I said, you know, tell me, how am I doing? You're doing great. I said, well, what do I need to improve on? Oh, I don't know. You're doing great. Keep it up. You know, the results are good. Just keep it up. And I said, there has to be something that I can do better. Well, I I don't really know what you're supposed to do, but the job's going well. Everything's good. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to go to lunch? And so we had this great relationship, but I wasn't, I wasn't growing. So I don't believe it's just the relationship. It's what happens in that relationship. Right now, it, it, it's interesting that yesterday I was I was um, doing a training with John Maxwell, and and he touched on five le- the five levels of leadership. Now that's a book that he wrote, I believe, in 2011, something like that. And the interesting thing about that is that the the base level of leadership is position, and the reality is that if we're at the base level of of a leader of leadership, our leadership abilities. Um, we, we've been given the title, we've been given the authority, but that's about all. And, and we really don't know how to get a lot out of people. So what you really get is a minimal effort from your people. You get mm-hmm. just the bare minimum. The next level up, level two of leadership is permission. This is when we're getting really good. This is when we have a really good relationship with our team. We listen well. We're observing what's going on. But... We're still not really at that level where I believe engagement begins. Then we get to the third level of leadership, which is production. This is when we are, we are producing really good results. People follow us because of what we've done for the organization. They, they view us as a leader that leads by example. They see us as one that creates momentum and excitement for the team. We're actually attracting better people, but we're still not at the level of leadership where we're engaging our team, that comes to, that's at the fourth level of leadership, which is when we begin to have growth plans for our team. And and what struck me, so there's only one level of leadership above that, and that's the pinnacle. You know, that's where where we become, uh, people look at us with almost a moral authority of of, of leadership. So we got to get to the fourth level of leadership before we're truly engaging our employees. And, and I think what happens is you have to build. So you've got the people, we've got a track record. People follow us because of what we've done, where we've been, but they sense that, we're true, that we as leaders are truly interested in them as individuals and helping them achieve their goals and desires. Mm-hmm. And that's the key. Too many leaders are trying to get their teams and their people to simply focus on the company's goals. Right. And they're missing the point of tapping into what does this person want? Mm-hmm. Now, the danger in that is that we may discover that that person, their goals don't align with the company's goals. They might be in the wrong position. 
And how do you handle something like that? Uh, I, I think what we do in that case is we, we kind of ask the person, well, what, what, what do you really want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if the if the reality is that this person's goals and objectives aren't, or their goals for life, let's say, don't fit in with what we need from them, we really should be coaching them to find another position. Mm-hmm. Might be in the company, but might not. It might be to go somewhere else. Um, and and I, I have a story that, that I use in my classes, and I won't go into the, the length of the story because it's pretty long, but a story that, that I heard, um, actually my dad had told me that he had a young man that worked for him many, many years ago. A uh, young man came in, you know, as an entry-level employee, was getting married, wanted to, needed more money. Um, so the only job that was available was if they could train him to be a welder. So they sent him to BOCES to learn to weld. He kept finding different welding courses that he wanted to take, and the company just kept saying yes, yes, yes. Then he finally came to a welding technique called TIG welding that the company didn't need. Mm-hmm. But the young man said, but it's the only kind of welding I don't know how to do. So my dad just said, fine, we'll, we'll pay for you to learn to TIG weld. Then the day came, as my dad knew it would, when the man left to go somewhere else where he could make more money as a TIG welder. But this long part of the story, try to make it short, which I already can't, because um, <laughs> it's already too long. Just before my dad retired as a director of manufacturing uh, for a, a, a local company, this same man applied for a job as a welder. Mm-hmm. And so what was the beauty of that was that had my dad stayed in, in that company longer, that man might have come back and had been one of the best welders he had. So we never know when we encourage... If, I can say this, when we encourage people to live their dreams, it will always come back to bless us in some way. Mm-hmm. And so let's say, well, we can't afford to lose this person. Well, you know what? If they're not engaged, you can't afford to keep them. Right. Because you're going to lose them anyways. You know, yeah, you're, you're going to lose them. They'll be there, them, but they're not, if they're not But they're lost. Engaged, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So you're sitting there paying somebody to just come and, and mm-hmm. keep a seat warm. Mm-hmm. So I, I think... For leaders, that's the key. We have to begin to look at our teams, not for what we want to get out of them, but what can we do to help them reach their maximum potential? You know, and it's like, it's like uh, Simon Sinek, not Simon Sinek, Dave Ramsey said it last year's Live to Lead. We had, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, do we love our employees? Right. And I love that because it doesn't, he's not saying, do you like them all? Do you love them? It's like our kids. Mm-hmm. We don't always like them, but we love them and right. we want what's best for them. Mm-hmm. And if we demonstrate that to our employees, they'll do anything for us. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the, I think that's the, the leadership side. I think, um, so let's touch for a moment here on the, the employee side. Um, I believe that growth and development falls into the same responsibility category as motivation. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. Okay. Because if, if we look at it from the standpoint of the five levels of leadership that John Maxwell identified, I think it's very rare to get a leader that's at the pinnacle level, level five. It's almost as rare to get them up to level four. If, when I was reviewing this yesterday in a teaching with John, I still believe that most leaders are either at level one or two. Wow. So the reality is, uh, I don't mean this in a rude way, but don't hold your breath mm-hmm. for your boss to become the leader you'd like them to be. Now, I believe that a lot of people want to learn that, and that's kind of why I do what I do. So take ownership for your own growth. And, and one of the keys, this was, this was something that, that John said in the, in the teaching that I was taking part in yesterday, You need to start. Mm -hmm. Just start. Identify what you love. You know, what we we talked about that with our goals. What makes you sing? What makes you cry? Identify things in your career, in your job path that you enjoy. And then look at um, what are you good at and begin to find resources to help you improve that. Uh, One of the things I believe everybody should try to grow in is in their leadership skills Mm -hmm. because leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So we are all influencing people all the time. 
So learn in ways to do that. And there's all kinds of ways to learn and to grow. Um, one of the things that John had said in this, this teaching that I was um, taking part in, not yesterday, but the day before yesterday, was that he began, he, he and I want, you know, I'm going to go to my notes because I do have them here, because I thought it was really interesting how he put it. Um, he, he started out by saying, getting started is the key to life. Um, which I thought was interesting because mm-hmm. too many of us sit there and we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait. No, he said, getting started is the key. Just start, mm-hmm. start the journey. But then he said, you, I need to identify at least two, but no more than five areas of growth. At least two, but no more than five. And, and one of the things that he does is, is one of the um, areas of growth is is more attitudinal so you choose to have a different focus and then another one would be a skill that you would that you would like to to learn um so one of the things he he identified was he goes invest one hour a day in the two areas that you've chosen total of an hour a day and he he ident he broke it down into three phases preparation practice and reflection so let's say we're working on our attitude. How do I improve my attitude? Well, I start thinking positive thoughts. I start identifying things in my life that are going well. Then we move to practicing it. How am I, gonna, how am I going to practice that attitude? Maybe it's I'm going to be um, more pleasant when I come into work. So you just practice coming in with a smile and saying good morning. And then at the end of the day, you reflect on how did you do on that? Mm-hmm. So that, again, that preparation, practice, reflection becomes a process that, the, that the, you would go through, but you really have to do it on a daily basis. That's the key. Mm-hmm. It gets into that building daily habits. Right, right. So it sounds, that's hard. It, I was just going to say that it is hard. But once one of the you ways, start and, you know, it gets, yeah. it, you know, it gets easier every, every day or every, day. every week. Yep. <clears throat> yep. But you have to start. And the other thing he identified in this in this this teaching that I was taking part in on on Tuesday was you have to share it with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I think that's key. Yeah. Pick pick a partner, a growth partner that you can share your your goal with. Because that because growth is accelerated in an accountability environment. Right. So I think that's the key, and and I think it's exciting. Uh, you know, I, I, I was, I was having some struggles as life brings it. Nothing major, but what I did, and th- so this happened to me yesterday too. I was, I had a, a major Tuesday was an extremely busy day for me. Um, training all afternoon, meetings in the morning, and including a teaching that I wanted to engage myself in between ten and eleven. Then yesterday, I I was doing a teaching in the morning. I had other meetings. Um, I had things that I would have liked to have done, but I didn't have the energy. I just like mentally, emotionally, physically, I was drained. Mm-hmm. I ch- and I had a recorded teaching by John that I accessed, and it energized me. Yeah. So, you know, and so people will say, well, how long do you need to do this? Forever. Right. I mean, that's because it, it's energizing. But eventually it becomes like, you know, like brushing your teeth, you know, it just, yeah. it's just part of, of your day. Right, mm-hmm. right. So in, so in a week when I'm challenged by a lot of things, I have more energy now than I had before I started the week because I deliberately engaged in growth opportunities mm-hmm. for a total of about, I would say, an hour each day, Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And I came in today with renewed energy. Mm-hmm. So that's the key. So I don't know, did I answer well enough the, the, the leader and the, the employee side of your question? Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay, good. I think so. What, two, so. A couple other tips that I just want to give for the leaders that are listening. Um, when you want to engage, when you're, when you're working on helping your, your direct reporting grow, Look for teachable moments. Those are moments when 
you can take a situation and create a learning, make it a positive, a learning experience. Look for breakthrough moments. That's usually when an employee is, is, is coming, they've kind of hit bottom on something. It's been a real bummer. That becomes a breakthrough time. And then you kind of use that to help encourage that person. Because usually we'll, our biggest change will come after a, a large, a, a sincere pain or a deep, a deep pain kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then look for catalyst or leverage times, times when you can leverage their skills, another employee's skills, and your skills to make a major breakthrough for the organization to kind of like a catalyst or a lever of some sort to really propel the organization forward. Yeah. And I think if you do that, your employees will be engaged. Mm -hmm. I think we have a great opportunity. If you think about the 50% that are just showing up every day, if we get 10 or 20% of that 50%, wow, we're, we're going to be soaring with the eagles. Yep, absolutely. And it's a lot more fun. <laughs> Definitely. <coughs> Definitely makes for better teams and absolutely. a more positive environment as well. Right. Now, I will say this for leaders that are listening. Your goal is to help your employee discover their growth plan, not give them one. Mm -hmm. um, leaders need to make sure that they don't, you know, kill their employees by, by an overdose of, of growth. Right. You know, we don't all grow at the same pace. Mm -hmm. and, and leaders need to do a lot more listening and a lot less telling. And then they'll really be able to develop their team to being a high potential, high functioning team. Sorry, you probably hear the buzzing that is my dryer going off right now. So I guess we're full of noise today. That's all right. <laughs> Multitasking, that's what that, we need. That was our buzzer to stop, I guess. That was our buzzer. <laughs> we're, we're getting close to the end of our, yes. our, our time here. So any, uh, any hints on what we're going to be talking about next week? Yeah, you know, and I really wasn't sure until this morning, but I think since I talked about those five levels of leadership, I think we might need to spend a week or two digging into what they are mm -hmm. um, and what a leader needs to do to move from one to the next. How's that? Good. I was hoping you'd say we'd do one of those. So, yeah. Perfect. Yep. So, tonight, of course, I know this is going to be a week later, but tonight mm -hmm. is our is our post-holiday reception open house here, and I think we're... Mm -hmm. We've got so much food. I think this is awesome food that's going to be donated um, here in the Central New York area. Yes. I want, to, our food you know, I want to encourage our listeners, wherever they are, do some kind of a food drive. Mm -hmm. You know, because this time of year, the food pantries really are hurting. Yep. Absolutely. So, and right. it's really easy. I mean, if, if you don't have anything, you know, extra in your home, it's really easy to pick up some inexpensive goods yeah, at, at the exactly. store. and. When, you know, everyone chips in a little bit, it ends up being a lot. I know that when we set, set our goal to have a food drive um, with this event, um, you know, my, my expectations have already been been shattered. I mean, we've we've outdone ourselves, I think, and our members have outdone the, themselves um, in their generosity. We had so many members come out and say, you know, we'll, we'll make it a company-wide affair and we will bring – all of our donations to you guys to add to your pile. Um, and so on top of the individuals that have been contributing, we've had a lot of company engagement as well, which is really nice to see. It is. And I think it's right where MACNI should be, mm -hmm. helping, helping make Central New York a better place to live. Absolutely. So, great. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.